Come, come, whoever you are, to Meg's Magical Mansion, a virtual guest house for the spiritual wayfarer, a place where the ordinary becomes magical, where wisdom is yours for the asking, and your higher nature is just a wish away. Thanks for joining us here today at Meg's Magical Mansion. I'm Meg, and this is my scrumptious parlor maid, Parfait. And this is my fluffy companion, Ollie. And you might notice the roles that are a little bit reversed today. That's because today it is Parfait's special day. It's her birthday! Happy birthday, Parfait! Yay. So I didn't bring you tea. I brought you a little bubbly to start a little toast for your day. You are awesome. Thank you. Because I know not only is she a Gemini, she's also a champagne girl. And I know she's a Cancer, so... Thank you. So it's your birthday, so you get to pick the topic for today. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, I think the topic should be moon magic. All right, so that's what it's going to be. Stick around. We're going to tell you all about the magic of the moon, how you can use its power to help you manifest. Oh, Ollie. And we might even have a giveaway. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> I lost my tiara. I guess it's time for Words of Wisdom. Today's Words of Wisdom are brought to us by Robert Louis Stevenson. It's the poem, The Moon. The Moon by Robert Louis Stevenson. The moon has a face like the clock in the hall. She shines on thieves on the garden wall, on streets and fields and harbor keys and birdies asleep in the forks of the trees. The squalling cat and the squeaking mouse, the howling dog by the door of the house, the bat that lies in bed at noon, all love to be out by the light of the moon. But all of the things that belong to the day cuddle to sleep to be out of her way. Flowers and children close their eyes till up in the morning the sun shall rise. Oh, that was such a lovely poem. And you know, since it's my birthday and since I really don't want to do anything, I think we're going to go to Meg right now who's going to talk more about moon magic. Take it away, Meg. You know, people have been obsessed with the magic and mysticism of the moon since the dawn of time. And practitioners of witchcraft have been working their rituals around the different phases of the moon. And they do this to bring about certain different desired results. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how you can use the power of the moon to help charge up any sort of workings you are doing. Remember, the moon is our nearest celestial body and its gravitational pull on the earth is definitely something we feel all the time. And of course, 71% of the earth is water, which is why the moon affects our tides. But our bodies are also about 60% water. So it's hard for me personally not to believe that that gravitational pull isn't somehow affecting our bodies as well. And I like to also think about the difference at this time between the sun and the moon. The sun represents rational thought, masculine energy, left brain, logical functions. But the moon represents intuition, feminine energy, right brain creative functions. So that's where our focus will be today. And living life in tune with the moon cycles can help all of us stay in harmony with nature and her changes. 
And that, of course, is why people who are into Wicca or paganism or druidism tend to be really interested in the phases of the moon and keeping track of it because there's that interest in the cycles of nature and the earth and the universe around us. So there are eight phases of the moon. We're going to talk about them a little bit today. But I think one key generality to keep in mind is the idea that when the moon is waxing or getting larger, you want to work with energies of trying to bring things in, draw things in. So a waxing moon is the time to draw energies in, draw in things you're trying to manifest. When the moon is waning or getting smaller, this is a time to work on casting out, repelling, getting negative energies out. So just keep that in mind as we go through the eight phases of the moon. Let's begin with the new moon. It's the first phase of the lunar cycle, and the moon has just reappeared after two or three days of dark moon where we can't really see the moon. This is a time for inception, new beginnings, setting intentions, and planting the seeds for your future. It's a time for imagining and dreaming up brand new realities for yourself and to start getting the things in your mind that you want to manifest. Then we move to the waxing crescent moon. The moon is growing. It's a time of highly magnetic energies. This is the time to start calling in the things you want to manifest, thinking about those future plans and ideas and emotional states you would like to be in, like to be in a happy or positive or a state of self-love. You wanna go inside yourself during the waxing crescent moon and pull out what you want more of rather than looking out externally too much. First quarter moon. This is where you begin attracting things from the external world. This is a time for drawing in people, money, success, material things. Also an excellent time to call back things, objects, or items that you have lost. The waxing gibbous moon gives that extra shove to help you keep your momentum going. It can help if you have a lack of motivation or stagnation, fulfilling some of those plans you started at the new moon. It kind of can help push you right over the finish line. So use its energy to help you if you're just sort of feeling you're in a lull and you're having trouble getting traction. The full moon is of course the strongest and most powerful and most energetic time. This is the time to take on big issues and focus magically on the things that are most urgent or important in your life. It's a great time to work on your psychic development, your own spirituality and growth, and it is a perfect time for divination. The Waning Gibbous Moon the waning gibbous moon is a wonderful time to work on minor banishings and cleansings. It's a good time to realign your goals. It's a time for introspection. And it's a, it's a time to get clear on what no longer serves you. Third quarter moon. This is a perfect time for overcoming obstacles or figuring out how to get around any barriers. It's good for smoothing out transitions or changes in your life. And the energies of the third quarter moon can help you stay tenacious and see things through to the finish. The waning crescent moon. This is a time for bigger banishings, things that suck up your joy and drain you physically or psychically. This is a time to cut things out a project or a job that's going nowhere, a toxic relationship. This is a time for cord cutting. The zodiac or the astrological signs also play a big part in moon magic. Remember, each one of these phases is falling during an astrological sign. So the characteristics of that sign can affect how you do your workings. For example, 
Right now, it's currently June of 2022, and our next full moon will be July 13th. It will be a buck moon in Capricorn. And because Capricorn has certain qualities, this is a time to work on stability, organization, and ambition, because those are qualities that we associate with Capricorns. The new moon will come up on July 28th, and that will be in Leo. And Leo makes me think about working on things like career, uh, things, areas where I need to be very courageous or build up my strength, or areas of leadership. So it's very important to remember that those astrological signs will color your workings. So pay attention to what sign the moon is in that you are working with. And finally, I want to bring up the burning question I know is on everyone's mind. Does the full moon make you crazy? Well, we did get the word lunatic and the term loony from lunar. But scientifically, it is said that the full moon does not cause more aggression or more violence. It does not seem to increase anxiety or depression. But it may affect people with bipolar disorder and it can interfere with your sleep cycle, causing less deep sleep and delaying your REM sleep. And it can affect cardiovascular conditions slightly as well. However, as someone who taught elementary school for 30 years, or ask any emergency room worker, and ask a police officer or a fireman, an EMS person, and I bet you they will tell you it absolutely gets crazy on a full moon. So I'll leave that up for you to decide whether you think the full moon makes you a little loony or not. But those are a few little facts about working with the magic of the moon that you can take and put into your practice. Great job, Meg. Who knew all that great information about the moon? All that talk about the moon made me thirsty. We're going to head over to the bar and I'm going to make some blue moons. Let's go. And now it's time for What's the Tea with Parfait. Hey everybody, thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be bringing you a very special drink for my birthday. And let's face it, the only work I want to do on my birthday is make drinks. So let's go ahead and talk about what's going to go in this fabulous drink. It's called a Blue Moon Martini. We're going to go ahead and put some delightful French gin in there. And we're also going to be putting in a creme de la valetta, which is a cream of violet, I believe. I'm pretty sure I didn't say that right, but just bear with me. I, I hear it's pretty delish. And then also we're going to be using some lemon to zest and garnish. So let's go ahead and begin. Now because we're going to be actually making a drink for two, we're going to actually double this, but just remember it's a two to one ratio. So we're going to go ahead and put in four ounces of our gin. Now since it's my birthday, if I go a little heavy handed, please don't tell me. So we're going to go ahead and put in four of those, pour those in. Now gin martinis just always remind me of James Bond. You know, I always want to be a Bond girl, but I, I never quite get that down. I'm sure you have, everybody has their favorite Bond girls, so I can always think of mine. We're gonna go ahead and pour in four of those. This is really gonna get the party started. After we put our gin in, then we're gonna put in our creme de la velata. I think that's how you would say that. Anyway, I'm trying to make it sound fancy, but, you know, bear with me. We're gonna put in, again, two of these. Now, we are making double this because Meg and I are going to be sharing these delightful drinks. Ooh, look at that color. Fabulous. There we go. Oh, that looks like so much fun. Purple is my favorite. So the fact that this is purple really makes it special for my birthday. Uh, to be 29 again, you know, I think that all those years, all those 29 years. Ooh, we're just gonna stir this. Ooh, lots of stirring. Now I know why he likes it stirred, not shaken. Ooh, 
finally done stirring. Put our strainer on. We're also going to zest our lemon. So you want to go ahead and zest your lemon. There we go. I'm just going to put that a little on the rim there. Give it a little zest. And we'll pour. And there you have a Blue Moon Martini. Did somebody say Blue Moon Martini? Oh my God, look, it's Meg, everybody. I'm back at the drive-thru window. She loves the drive-thru. <laughs> Who Cheers, else has darling. a drive-thru drink window? Well, you know, it's really important on our birthdays to celebrate. Cheers. <laughs> to 29. To 29, Parfait. Happy birthday. Mm. Thank you. Ooh, that is good. Delightful. Ooh, this is I love, I love this. this. <laughs> so, we're enjoying our delicious drinks and we have a special birthday cake for Parfait to celebrate her 29th birthday again. Aww, thank you so much. So let's all sing happy birthday to Parfait. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Make a wish and blow out your candles, girl. Okay, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I have it. Oh yeah! Well. So and until much. your 29th birthday rolls around again next year. I can't wait. So, we hope you had fun today and maybe you learned a little bit more about moon and moon magic stuff. Absolutely. So, if you had a good time, why not give us a like or a share? Or you can subscribe. You can always ring the bell. We can let you know when we post new episodes. And we'll see you back here next time. Absolutely. For more fun at Meg's Magical Mansion. Cheers. Cheers! Four. Turtles!